Ganesh is considered to be the most special amongst Hindu gods. No temple in India cannot have a statue of Lord Ganesh. Ganesh is a god of knowledge, wisdom, prosperity and fortune, and it is believed that any prayer or ritual without paying obeisance to Ganesh will be fruitless. Devotees of Ganesh believe that every ceremony or ritual should begin by invoking Ganesh's name as he is the Vighnaharta, meaning the remover of obstacles. Although referred with very many names like Ganapati, Vinayak, Vigneshwara, Lambodar, he is popularly known as Ganesh. With the head of an elephant, a broken tusk, a big belly, four arms and riding a mouse, he is also perhaps the most unique Indian god to look at. Ganesha was born to Lord Shiva and Parvati on the fourth day of the waxing moon period that falls between August and September. This is how the story of Ganesha's birth goes. After several years of penance, when Goddess Parvati was taking a bath with her friends, Lord Shiva arrived at her palace without any notice. Parvati was unhappy with his behavior and decided to create a child of her own. She scraped some dirt from her body and shaped it into a beautiful boy. Bringing life into the boy, she instructed him not to allow anyone inside the palace while she was bathing. After a while, when Lord Shiva tried to enter again, he was stopped at the entrance by the boy. Lord Shiva was enraged beyond control and they broke into a fight. Despite being well aware of the might of Shiva and the repercussions that could follow, Ganesha refused to disobey his mother even if it costed him his life. In a fit of rage, Shiva severed the head of the child with his trishul. When Parvati came to the door, her eyes fell on her beheaded son. In no time, she took the infuriated form of Kali and threatened to destroy the world. Fearing her anger, Shiva implanted the head of the first creature he saw, which was an elephant, thus bringing Ganesha back to life. This very story is a lesson that there is no greater virtue than being dutiful towards your parents and Ganesha proved this a number of times. Once, sage Narada, who loved to stir trouble wherever he went, paid a visit to Shiva and Parvati. He said, I have this root of knowledge for your better son. How can I decide which one is better? asked Shiva, turning to his wife Parvati. Parvati suggested a race between her two sons. He who first goes around the world thrice shall get the fruit of knowledge. Kartikeya immediately mounted on his peacock and rose to the sky, determined to win the fruit. Ganesha, however, did not move. He continued to sit beside his parents, playing with his rat. Kartikeya went around the world once, then twice, wondering where Ganesha would have reached. Ganesha still showed no signs of movement. As Kartikeya was about to complete his third round, Ganesha got up and went around his parents three times and declared himself the winner. Confused by Ganesha's act, Kartikeya demanded an explanation. Ganesha said, You went around the world. I went around my world. Your world is objective. My world is subjective. Your world is rational and scientific. My world is intuitive and emotional. Both are the truths. But Ganesha asked, what matters more? He was blessed with the fruit and came to be known as the Lord of Knowledge. Ganesha was later married to Riddhi and Siddhi. As per Ganesh Purana, Riddhi and Siddhi were born from the mind of Brahma. Riddhi symbolizes prosperity and knowledge, while Siddhi represents perfection. It is sometimes said that when Ganesha grew too naughty for the other gods to handle, Brahma created Riddhi and Siddhi to get him married and lead a happy and responsible life. Riddhi and Siddhi are an intrinsic part of Lord Ganesha. Any devotee who prays to Ganesha and pleases him is blessed by Riddhi and Siddhi as well. Ganesha went on to write one of the greatest epics known to mankind, the Mahabharata, which is the longest poem in the world. Legend has it that Ganesha agreed to write the Mahabharata only on one condition, that sage Ved Vyas would recite the entire Mahabharata without a pause so that he could finish writing it at once. Both came to terms, but in midst of writing the epic, Lord Ganesha's pen broke. In order to not miss the sage's poem and to stick to his terms, he immediately broke one of his tusks and dipped it in ink and continued writing. 
and that is why he was named Vignaharta, meaning the remover of obstacles. Ganesh Chaturthi, the birthday of Ganesh, is celebrated all across India. During Ganesh Chaturthi, we see people creating and worshipping idols of Ganesh in all sizes. Ganesh is believed to fulfill all wishes and bring happiness to his devotees. Throughout the 10 days of celebrations, devotees offer Ganesh prayers, flowers, modak, laddus and other delicacies. On the 10th day, the idols are brought out to the roads with great enthusiasm and fervor. On the last day of the festival, devotees dance and celebrate their way to the ceremony where Ganesh is immersed in water. Idol immersion is an integral part of every festival as it symbolizes human life cycle. The crafting of idols every year signifies creation. The clay used to make the idols give the idols a definite form. The immersion of the idol is also symbolic as the akar, meaning form, becomes the nirakar, meaning formless, because at the end of the day, we all know that the Supreme God is beyond form, shape and time.